Hey, it's Russ, the host of Learning More. I want to thank you for listening each week. And I want to let you know that each week is going to mean something (laughs) starting this week. Yeah, we've been working to produce new episodes and uh, it has been so much fun. And we have got some great episodes coming up just in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be learning about pandemic parenting. Also, dating during the pandemic. What What is that like? And, and really, what's going on with online dating these days? We're also going to learn about space tourism. And what point in your life are you the happiest? These are just some of the topics coming up on Learning More over the next few weeks. So be sure to hit subscribe. I also wanted to do this little bonus thing here to thank those in Australia. You have made us one of the top 100 documentary podcasts in the country. So thank you to Australia and uh, uh, United States, uh, Europe. Come on, catch up. (laughs) Let's get us in the top 100. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. And we've got some great episodes coming up. And we're going to start one, actually, probably like right now. As we get through this next phase of the pandemic times, what does it mean for us parents? How do we properly care for our children and their emotional health? We delve into that topic today as we learn more about pandemic parenting. Pandemic parenting. It's it's just what us Gen Xers needed, right? I mean, so I'm a Gen Xer and I had to struggle with, you know, my kids getting on social media. It, previous generations didn't have to deal with that. Now I know, you know, every other generation has their struggles and different things to deal with. But wow, <laughs> social media is just hard. Dealing with the internet and having that pipe into your kid's bedroom, essentially, like, It's hard. Smartphones, wherever they go, how much screen time do you give them? All of these questions that we've had to deal with as Gen X parents. And now we're essentially having to do this through a pandemic. I talked uh, the other day with a friend of mine and we were talking about how, okay, well, their five-year-old doesn't really know what's going on. Whereas their teenager knows what's going on and does not want to be at home right now. (laughs) She wants to be out with her friends and doing things. And she hasn't been able to do that. She basically missed her entire freshman year of high school. So this can be very tough for the kids. So let's learn more about parenting through the pandemic. Okay, so I am joined today by Dr. Amanda Sheffield Morris. She's a professor of human development and family science at Oklahoma State University. She has a book on this topic and a website where you can get additional information. We'll tell you about that in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about an article that she wrote with um, a colleague of hers giving the 10 things that we should do to reduce the stress of the pandemic. And the first item on that list is connecting with your children. Can you talk a little about that, Amanda? Sure. I'm happy to talk about that. So I also want to just say that I'm a parent too. I have two teenagers and I have friends and we regularly kind of argue about who has it worse, you know, (laughs) with the teenagers or the toddlers. Mm -hmm. And, and there's no easy answer there, but, um, that connecting part is a really important thing that we need to do as parents. And, and my background is developmental psychology and that strong parent, child, parent, adolescent relationship is really the foundation of everything. So dealing with screen time, dealing with your kids wanting to go hang out with their friends in a non-safe environment, all of that is easier if you have a good relationship with your with your kids. So um, it might look different depending on the different ages, but a lot of it's just about communication and having open communication and conversations, acknowledging that this is really hard for everyone, mm-hmm. um, as, and really being aware of what they're feeling and, and being empathic around that. Um, it's also about just spending time together. So 
we're spending lots of time together, right? Um, but, you know, getting <laughs> off the screen in the beginning of the pandemic with my kids, we we did the We Fit games, you know, right. I mean, we were doing all kinds of stuff, um, you know, going on a bike ride or going outside, but trying to do things that, you know, the kids find fun. So spending time together, having open communication, those are some of the things that you can do to connect with your kids. And, you know, one of the things that I've recently done is, um, and I, you know, so, you know, I'm, I work from home as well and dealing with contractors and things like that. I generally, you know, some of them are, are communicate better on Slack versus email or, you know, they want to be text right. messaged or whatever it is. I deal with that with work and I've kind of brought that into the, the home environment as well, where I think that with the different age groups, like dealing with teens, you know, like send them text messages as well, even though yeah. they're in the same house, because I, I feel like communicating on their same level with their same technology, I think that's kind of a, a good thing too. What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, as much as you can, but depending on the age, following them on their Instagram account, you know, right. being aware of what they're putting on their story and having those conversations so that you can talk with them um, about it. That's all really important too. So I agree. Texting is a great way and it's easy. And sometimes, you know, when your kids aren't home, you know, not only texting them, but finding out where they are, you know, tracking, tracking them. <laughs> right. Um, I love to find my say, phone. <laughs> you you got to love to find my phone. And, and as long as kids know that you're doing right. it, um, it's a good thing. Okay. We've got the, the communication base and I know that we could spend an entire podcast just on, <laughs> on that alone. But uh, you mentioned the We Fit, which made me think of another bit of advice from the article, which is be physically active. Um, and doing family routines like that, like every weekend, we try to go on a hike um, just to kind of do that physical activity. You know, we trade off where, you know, I'm I'm talking to one kid for a little bit. My wife's talking to another, you know, and so as we're going on the hike, we're talking as well. But I, I feel like the physical activity thing is is something that is really lacking right now with with kids. Yeah. What what are some other suggestions that you that you have to to kind of, you know, help build that as well? Yeah, so physical activity is good for so many reasons. It, you know, it helps our mental health, it helps us manage stress in the body. Um, and it, and it's something that can really be a release when you're pent up inside. And so I think with kids, you know, depending on the age, doing something as a family is great, but letting them, if it's safe and depending on, on what your environment is, you know, letting them be outside, that's one of the safest things that they can do mm -hmm. with their friends, um, is to be outside and go on a bike ride or, you know, um, go on a walk. And, um, I think the more we're learning about, you know, now that we're not, we've been doing this for a year, um, you can wear a mask and be outside around your friends and it's fine. So, you know, I think being open to those things because the kids need the release. Um, just, like Oh yeah. Do. Well, okay. And you know, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I remember as a kid, I was outdoors all the time right. you know? and for this generation, it's, it's sort of been a lot of, um, structured activities like soccer or baseball right. or, you know, things like that. And I, prior to the pandemic, I could probably count on one hand the amount of times where, you know, my son drove off on his bike and just biked around the neighborhood with friends, you know, like now they're doing that right. because they can't be inside and play screens. You know? yeah. <laughs> they can't just, just be on Minecraft or Fortnite all day. They've actually got to go uh, to the park. <laughs> what? Right. I know. It's one of the positive things that has come from this, I think, is kids on their bikes and going for family oh, yeah. walks and hikes. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, so, okay, yeah, the I mentioned that the hikes are kind of our weekly thing. Um, we've also tried to set some other routines. Um, and setting routines, I, I think, you know, obviously was a good thing just over overall when parenting. But right now, I, I feel like that's especially important. Um, what are some of the routines, some of the things that, that, that parents should do? do uh, with their kids? Yeah, kids feel more safe when they know what to expect and when they have routines. And since they're not in school, or if they're in limited school, um, those routines are really important. So sort of saying, what are we going to do today? Here's the time that we're going to do our schoolwork. Here's the time that we're going to go outside. Here's the time that we're going to play a family game, whatever it might be. But keeping those rules are really rules and routines are really important. Um, 
The other thing that's important with older kids is this unstructured time is is sort of dangerous in a way. Like so when kids are that's when they get into trouble. That's when they're on screens mm-hmm. doing things they shouldn't be doing. Um but so trying to provide that structure. So whether it's, you know, um being outside and being physically active, but also, you know, doing something over screens, you know, doing um you know, your club over Zoom or doing a family um, Zoom call with the grandparents, whatever it may be. But having to build in some of that structure really is helpful for kids too. You mentioned schoolwork. And, yeah. and I I don't know if you noticed because we're, we're seeing each other on camera here. You probably saw me wince a little bit. <laughs> that has been driving me absolutely crazy. The, the whole, you know, trying to like, how much should we be concerned about like, I almost feel like in a way, I'm either the teacher or the principal. And I, I hear that from a lot of kids. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry, from a lot of parents. Uh, what do we do? What is some advice for not now the, the kids, but for us in, in dealing with the online school? Yeah, well, first of all, realizing that this is super hard. I mean, it's hard enough, like you said, to be a parent and to manage your job, but to try to manage school as well is just a Herculean task. I think um, what we're learning through all of this is that um, kids are fairly resilient. I mean, it's really easy to get super worked up that our kids are not learning what they need to be learning at this age. But children are remarkable at being able to make up things and being able to overcome and, and learn when there are major disruptions in their lives. So I think not to put too much pressure on yourself as a parent. Okay, we're going to read this. We're going to get this worksheet done. I'm not the best teacher. I would be a teacher if I was. And so, you know, <laughs> giving yourself a little bit of, 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 a, of a break there and just trying to get through. I mean, you know, I think it's, it is going on longer than I think we all thought. And so that makes it a oh, challenge yeah. because we don't mm-hmm. want our kids to lose too much time. But again, kids, kids, kids are pretty resilient. They're going to be okay. Like, what do you think as we go through this and sort of re-enter life as we used to, whatever the new normal is, what do you see as kind of the, the mental health um I guess, temperature gauge right. going forward once we've all sort of um, come back to normal? Well, I do think the next pandemic is mental health. And I think we are seeing that with the number of the amount of stress that parents and adults are experiencing, what the kids are experiencing. Um, and so we do need to be to acknowledge the mental health. Um, I don't know if it's a crisis is the right word, but we've got to address that um, in our kids and in our families. In terms of trauma, I think um, and a, a, a lot of what we're experiencing now is just high, high levels of stress and being able to get over that and, and, and kind of get back to normal. That's something that you need the support of your friends and your family's t- family to do. So, um, I do think that we'll need to be thinking about that. We'll need to be really um, watching our kids and making sure that they're kind of transitioning back, but just giving us all a break and realizing this is really hard and this is going to take some time to get over. Yeah. Well, and you know, I I always feel like I I always think of the airplane, you know, when they tell you put your mask on first and then put on. (laughs) And I feel like it's kind of one of those situations where we also, we have to take care of ourselves as a parent so that we can take care of the kids. And I, th- it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not easy. And I think recognizing that it's tough is, is, is a good thing. So um, you put out a book right before the pandemic about parenting. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you've had to do a couple of re-edits yeah. to that last year. Can you tell us a little about that yeah, book? Yeah, we, um, with my colleague, Jennifer Hayes Grudo, um, we put out, it's more of a scholarly book on the research around adverse and protective childhood experiences from a developmental perspective. And we talk a lot in the book about how, how adversity and early life stress affects the body and the brain. Um, and right when that book came out, we went into quarantine. And so we really thought, oh my gosh, we're kind of living what we've been researching over the last decade and we're seeing it. And, um, you're really right to think about it from a whole family perspective. So you parents have to take care of themselves. So in that book, we talk a lot about what parents can do dealing with their own life history and trauma. Um, because now they're a parent, what, what triggers you, what, what are you dealing with? 
Um, and then also what we can do for our kids in general. But it's sort of um, taken on a completely new meaning being uh, right. in a pandemic, for sure. Oh, yeah. And then you've got a website as well. Sure. So um, our our website, we talk about the ACEs study, the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, which identified, um, which was which was published in 1998 um, and was conducted by the um, Centers for Disease Control um, in combination with Kaiser Permanente, and it looked at the effects of uh, ten experiences. Um, adverse experiences that happened before 18, and five of them are around abuse and neglect, and five of them are around family dysfunction, um, being a, a mental health problems in a parent, a parent going to prison, um, witnessing domestic violence, um, parents divorce. But, but what we found in that study, um, original study, which was conducted um, again in the 1990s, was that um, ACEs are common, they co-occur, and they, the effects are cumulative. And so looking at that adversity, um, what can we do about it? So from a developmental perspective, as a developmental psychologist, we know a lot around emotion regulation. We know a lot about resilience, parenting. And so to sort of kind of take the um, ACEs study and apply it to developmental science and resilience to say, here's what we can do when children have experienced ACEs. So that was what the original book was about. We've been able to apply our protective and compensatory experiences, the PACES part, which is sort of the antidote to ACEs. These are things that are good for all kids, for all families. Mm -hmm. Um, But in particular, if a child has experienced adversity or an ACE, these are things that parents can promote. Right. And uh, you can learn more about ACEs and PACES at acesandpaces.com. Of course, uh, we will put a link to that in the podcast description. Uh, Amanda, any parting advice? The only other thing that I think we might want to say is, you know, this has been a long time. I mean, we've been doing this for a year. And as much as we hope that we're starting to see a change, there's a possibility of a third wave, right? And so we just have to hang in there, um, take care of yourself, take care of your kids, but just realizing how hard this is. Thank you, Amanda, so much for joining us today and learning more with us about pandemic parenting. I should note that uh, the episode that you just heard was recorded several weeks ago. This is before the vaccine was released to 12 plus. Uh, Lots of changes. This is a fluid situation, as you know. So it is tough to put together a podcast on on this topic because... Uh, it's constantly changing. We do have an episode coming up in a couple of weeks about the vaccines, specifically mRNA, and we will learn more about that in a couple of weeks. Next week, we have another great episode coming out as well about space travel. Yeah, that'll be released next Tuesday. Yeah, we're shifting the dates a little bit here, moving things around on learning more, and we will be definitely more consistent about putting out the podcasts as we sort of tweak the format and all of that we do hope you subscribe and we hope that you are listening each week as we tell you more about inventions pop culture and life i'm your host russ again thank you to amanda for joining me today and thank you for joining us today we will talk to you next time